and he's good, and he's just. You guys, you guys ready? You guys excited? You guys been taking something from today? I don't know about you, but everywhere I go, and even if, does my mic sound cool? Even if uh, I'm the one that's going to be speaking, one of my prayers is, Lord, I come with expectations. Like, I come to hear a word for myself, too, not just coming and expecting just to give, but also to receive. And I felt like the Lord spoke to me through uh, all the three pastors that went up so far um, and gave me something personally to be able to take home. So my name is Lewis. I'm a lead servant at Chester Avenue Community Church in Bakersfield. Um, I also run a ministry called the Men of God Home. I love saying this. I tell the guys uh, in, in the men's home that a, men, a men's home is a spot where men stay. A men of God home is a spot where men grow in Christ. And that's what we try to do. We try to build kingdom men through his word and through the power of the Holy Spirit. So Jeremiah asked me to come up, and I'm honored. I'm excited. I'm going to pray here in a second. Do I got this mic all right? Okay, sounds weird to me. As long as you guys can hear, though, I just want to make sure. So we're talking about kingdom men and kingdom business. And I think many times, many get excited. Man, I'm I'm ready. I want to be a kingdom man. I want to do kingdom business. But what I want to talk about today is that I believe before we do both of those, you need to have a kingdom heart. We need to understand why we're doing things. We need to understand who we're doing things for. And if there's one thing that I've grabbed today, can you put that slide up of my uh, initial, the first one that's right there? My question for many of you guys today, whenever it comes to being a kingdom man in kingdom business, is how is your prayer life? My pastor encouraged me with this, and he says every time he gets into a counseling session with people, and they're talking and they're sharing, I'm struggling with alcohol, drugs, marriage is falling apart they're sharing all these things and as he hears his first response to everything that 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 they said is how is your prayer life and most of the people that said man I rarely pray I hardly pray I only pray when I come to church well I believe prayer is super vital for every kingdom man trying to do kingdom business if you're not praying you're straying I promise You may think you're in a place where you want the Lord to be, but I encourage you to pray. Me and, I want to say, two brothers in here, matter of fact, three brothers, seen the Lord already move when we were praying and stepped into a place, and it was just a God thing, and that came together through prayer. So let's pray real quick. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray, Father God, if anything be my words, let it fall. But if it be your words, let it stick to our hearts, Father God, not just to inform, but to transform. Father, this is a statement that we use in the body of Christ at Chester Avenue, and that's that we're not worried about creating a big church, but yet big people. And I pray today, Father God, at the end of this conference of this uh, kingdom men, kingdom business, that there'll be some big people for the Lord leaving this place that were impacted by the words of God and that take them forth with dunamis power. So Lord, bless this, keep this, anoint this, and do what only you can do in Jesus' name. And everybody said... So before we get into the scriptures, we're going to be on Matthew chapter 6, verse 5 through 7. That's going to be the highlight scripture today. I want to share a little bit of how I remember being young in my walk with God and having an understanding that prayer was so important. This understanding that I can talk to God and that he hears me. I think that's something that kingdom men on kingdom business sometimes don't believe. That we talk to God and that's good, but we don't believe that he actually hears us. I remember seeing believers pray long and powerful prayers, and and I was moved and encouraged by that, and I wanted that same heart to do the same. I also learned er early on that it wasn't the public prayers, meaning in front of people, that carried the most weight. And I learned that early, because I remember seeing people pray long. It it was kind of intimidating, like, man, I want to pray like them, and and I I can't pray after this person done pray because I I don't know how to pray. But I learned that it wasn't just the public prayers, meaning in front of people that carried the weight, but I've seen God move most in me and around me through this right here, this next slide. The prayers in my secret place with him and I alone. Where it was just me and God. It's just me and you, Lord. Just me and you in this place. 
Lord, I'm telling you, I'm not showing people that I want to be a kingdom man or I want to be about kingdom business. I'm not on TikTok, on Facebook, just saying, look, I'm a kingdom man about kingdom business. I'm saying, Lord, it's just me and you in this place. Church, are you guys hearing me? It doesn't matter how young you are in this place or how old you are in this place. We all need to be in the secret place. As a disciple of Jesus Christ who is doing Christian music and putting it out and traveling up and down California, going to different prisons, doing different, many things for the Lord. I need to make sure that I have a place for just me and God. Not in front of people. No one looking at me. A place where I can say, God, it's just me and you. A place to challenge my relationship with the Father. And I did that for myself. I didn't need nobody to tell me. I needed to make sure. Lord, am I doing everything that I'm doing as a kingdom man on kingdom business for you? Or am I doing it because I'm looking for your clap? I want people to remember my name. I tell a lot of people at Chester Avenue, I I wish that I can grab your guys' hands and stand before God and say, they're with me. They're they're, they're with me. These people are with me. But we're all going to stand before God one day alone. But I needed that place... Well, I can say, God, that's why I didn't want gum in my mouth. I knew it was going to come out. Let me tuck it up here. But this place where it's just me and God, no one's looking. The next slide says that where it's just me and you, just me and God. It's such an important spot. And it's so interesting because Pastor Adam started it off this morning and little did he know he was talking about the heart posture. And I said, man, Lord, thank you for confirming my message. And that's the way I see the Lord moving in my life personally. Everything that's done, he shows me this is me. There's fruit. And I don't know about you, but I don't want just fruit that comes quick. We need fruit that remains. Prayer life in the secret place is vital for the disciple of Jesus Christ. Today we will see in our text that Jesus Christ teaches about prayer and he really gets into the heart again about how and why we pray. Can you go to Matthew chapter 6? I'm going to, sorry if it's small, I'm going to read it out of my Bible. Verse 5 through 12, and I read out of the New King James Version. It says, and when you pray, say when you pray. pray. It says, you shall not be like the who? Oh, that's, that's like a cuss word in the church. Like if you tell somebody, you're a hypocrite, brother, it's like, man, this is, you keep cuss me out. But we're going to look at what hypocrite is. And to be honest, if many of us are honest today, many of us have been that. And some of us still struggle with being that. We got one amen. He says, and shall not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets that they may be seen by who? By men. Kingdom men in kingdom business understand that it's not about us. It's a sacrifice. Just like Pastor said, we got all these people coming from these different areas. It's a sacrifice. I didn't come here to put my name on the map, who I am, my church, my things. But just like Pastor's vision, kingdom business coming together to lift up the only name, which is Jesus. Jesus. It says, as surely I say to you, they have their reward. But when you pray, say when you pray. pray. It says, go into your room and when you have shut your door. I love that emphasis because that's something that I do personally when I go to my secret place. Father, this is exactly what you said to do. I come in and I shut my door in my secret place. He says, pray to your father which is in the secret. And your father who sees in secret will reward you what? That's so powerful. And it says that when you pray, do not use vain repetition as the heathens do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Therefore, do not be like them, for your Father knows the things that you need before you ask him in this manner. Therefore, pray. And that's when we get into our our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Jesus begins with when you pray, don't be like the hypocrites who love to pray to be seen by men. Understand this, even as a disciple, a preacher, we can create an audience who looks to us. We can, but the goal is to point them back to the Father, not to pray to be seen by men or to have praises by men. Can I get an A, just one amen, that it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not about me, Lord, it's about you. But here's my question. What's the heart behind what we do? 
I strongly believe that Jesus, when he was rebuking the Pharisees and the Sadducees, he didn't care about their works. They appeared that they were doing the good things. He says, why are you doing them? What is your heart behind what you're doing? Many of these Sadducees and these, and these Pharisees and these people in this time, especially the religious leaders, they wanted to be seen as holy and public prayer was a way to get attention. But Jesus saw through their what? He saw through their, no, you go to the next one. He saw through their selfish, selfish righteous acts. He saw through their look at me attitude. And I don't, I'm going to keep it real. In the beginning of my walk, I couldn't answer the Lord of why I was doing something. I couldn't say, God, I'm doing this music for you. I couldn't say, God, I'm preaching and I'm on the pulpit for you. I'm doing these outreaches for you because I really didn't know. Because deep inside, I really wanted to do it for me. But then I came to realize it ain't about me. I can't save nobody. My testimony can't save nobody. It's only the finished and completed work of Jesus Christ of Nazareth on the cross, crucified, raising on the third day. Amen? Amen. They had a selfish, righteous act, the look at me attitude and holy am I. It kind of reminds me of the world today doing kind deeds all over social media to be seen by men of how godly they are. But remember this on this next slide. And that's that God sees the heart behind the stuff that we do. Amen. This is why many times all you do is get a couple of likes on Facebook or a couple of claps. And I don't know if some of you older guys struggle with that. You're like, bro, I don't even got Facebook. That Tic Tac, what is that Tic Tac stuff? Can I get an amen? You ain't got none of that Tic Tac? Okay. You might want to get a Tic Tac. It is a good platform for ministry, 100% for sure. So we talked about hypocrite, a kingdom man on kingdom business needs to stay away from being a hypocrite. And let me show you what a hypocrite is, according to the Greek. Go ahead and go there. An actor. That's what a hypocrite is. It's an actor. It says in the Bible, the word hypocrite is translated from the Greek word hypocrites. Don't judge me on how I say words. I'm not perfect. I'm not. Don't, don't judge me. Which means an actor. It is used to describe someone who is false, deceptive, and deceived, formerly and outwardly religious and good, but inwardly insecure and unrighteous. This is why it's so important that we self-examine self. God, I don't want to look, think I'm a kingdom man on kingdom business because I'm doing kingdom works. God, I need a kingdom heart. I need a kingdom mind. My mind needs to be Romans 12. You guys know what Romans 12 is, right? Don't become conformed, but yet transformed by the renewing of our mind. The hypocrite may come to deceive himself as well as others, but the hypocrite's hope shall perish. Hypocrisy may involve a failure to discern spiritual truth or even a willful blindness to a spiritual matter. Some of us know, and even when we, here's something that I've learned in my time. I don't look like your normal pastor, just like Pastor Jeremiah. So when I come up and people see me with the chain and some earrings and some Nikes and they're like, bro, you're the one speaking? Like, like you're the pastor of the church? And people like to immediately look at that. But I thank God that he's going to look at the outward appearance of man, but he looks at the heart. He looks at the heart. I'm going to make sure it's 228, 235, because I know we went a little over. I'm going I'm to shut it down. You guys give me 10 minutes. You guys awake? God is good. Amen. Amen. Jesus tells them to stop being actors who know how to play the part for the glory of their own. This Greek word brings light to actors. Here's what they do. They, have, they put on this mask that had an exact. You guys go look, look this up yourself. They put on this mask that had this exaggerated face. That's what an actor was, and they were playing the part. Kingdom men on kingdom business, we can't do that. You're either all in or you're all out. You're either hot or you're cold because the Bible says in Revelations what's going to happen to the lukewarm. Amen? Jesus brings light when we understand hypocrite in being actors. Actors perform for the audience. They do it for the applauses of men, even for the money. Jesus here says, don't be like that. For if we do, here's your reward. That next slide, please. There it is. 
Praise God. My heart is that. My heart is that you would leave transformed, saying, you know what, God, I got a new perspective on something. You know what, God, I'm going to leave. Even if I feel like I know everything that was said, I'm going to challenge myself to relook at if I really do. Constantly examine ourselves. And Jesus came. It's interesting because the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they thought they were kingdom men on kingdom business. They really did. But they confessed with their mouth, just like many of us do. But yet our hearts are far from the Lord. And you know what's interesting is that I I judge. I judge actions righteously with the word of God. But many times the greatest person that knows what's going on in your heart is two people. That's Yahweh and it's you. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to be fake. I don't want to be that actor that puts on the mask. I want when I go home, I'm genuinely spending time with the Lord. I'm genuinely telling my kids we're staying away from these movies. We're not celebrating these certain things. We're not doing this. I'm standing firm even when no one is looking. It's not just in front of man for the applaud. We only got a couple amens. And amen just means so be it. That's what it means to me. So be it. So they were guilty of the prayer. And here's the two things that they were guilty of. They're the vain glory and the vain repetition. Something to know is that Jesus doesn't forbid all repetition in, in prayer, just the, the thoughtfulness and the ones that are not sincere. It's vain repetition. It's this. Go to the next slide. It's mostly words and no meaning. All lips, no mind or heart. It's just words coming out of the mouth. They just sound good. I asked the Lord from the inner depths. David said that when Psalms 51, Lord, search me. He says, purge me, wash me. A kingdom man on kingdom business really asks the Lord to cleanse him from the inside first. Cleanse him from the inside. Change my heart, Lord. Change my mind. What they did is they prayed in synagogues and street corners with many around. And as a disciple of Christ, you must grab this. And I pray you write this down and take this from today. Public prayer and private prayer are not the same. What you do in church on a Wednesday and on a Sunday is not the same what you do on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday inside your own home or inside your secret place. Public prayer and private prayer are not the same. And Jesus said, those who go to their secret place and pray in their secret place, they're going to be blessed in the open. And God really showed me this yesterday when the brother was like, man, I'm seeing everything you're doing, bro. God's doing a mighty work in your life. And I'm hearing him, and it doesn't puff me up because I want them to know that it's Jesus. Because, man, I know who I am in Christ, but I know I'm also unworthy. I still need the blood every single day. I need the blood. I I told the the men's home the other day, I said, sometimes we feel like we get to a posture as a kingdom man on kingdom business, and we don't think we need grace no more. That gay couple down the street that just got married, I need the same grace that they do. Oh, we didn't get too many amens on that. I need their same grace, that same mercy, that same love. I need that. Jesus says, but you, say but you. When you pray, go to your secret place. He says, church, the secret place. There's an importance on the emphasis secret. If it's a secret place, that means that no one knows. Did you get that? Because I think we think it's a mystery. Where's this secret place at? It's a place where no one knows. It's just you and God. It's a place of privacy. It's a place of hiding. It's a place of intimacy. Can I get real just for a second? The the, the Bible says intimacy is an important part of marriage, right? Intimacy is important. Remember that marriage, when married couples, they got intimate. And we have this intimacy with God. They don't do it in public when they get intimate, do they? You don't just see, uh, can I get real? There's no, no, I'm not going to. You don't just see people randomly having sex out here, do you? No, no, no. Married couples do that in private, and there's a purpose because they're getting intimate. Can I tell you, I have that intimate time with the Lord, and you need it too. Come on, that intimate time. I don't know if you got that. Once again, they don't do it in public or in front or around others. There's a place for you and, and your partner, a private place for your intimacy and church with God. I believe it's the same. The term used for the secret place is this, intimacy with God. 
That's what it is. I want to get intimate where it's just me and you, Lord. When's the last time you genuinely had that? Whether it be, God, my life is great. Well, I'm going to go in there and I'm going to thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. My life has been on the mountaintops before, I believe, financially in my marriage. And I still go to my secret place and I ask the Lord to examine my heart. Don't let me get puffed up. What does the Bible say? Lord, don't, don't make me rich lest I forget about you. Or Lord, don't make me poor lest I vain your name. But Lord, just give me enough, my daily bread. Amen? Amen. The word secret place is derived from the Hebrew word sether. And here's what it means. The word secret place is derived from the Hebrew word, which means a hiding, something hidden, private, or secret. It's this secret place. Family, intimacy is not always sex, but it's a closeness. To know God intimately means that we have developed a relationship with Jesus that is personal, but it's not just personal, it's consistent. If I just go to my wife when I need sex, there's not a personal relationship with her. When I just go and get what I need and I say, I'll see you later, and I say this in in love and reverence to our Abba Father, but that's what many uh, people who say they got kingdom men on kingdom, kingdom business do, is that the Lord is just like a booty call. Let me get what I want and I'll talk to you in a little bit. Whenever I need you. Or when life's falling apart. Or here's another one. Let me get health issues. Once you heal me, I'll come back to you, Lord. But through the health issues, I'm not going to do nothing. But until you give me what I want, once you do, I'll talk to you whenever I need you again. Can I get an amen for keeping it real? It's personal and consistent. I got four more minutes. I don't want want to go too over. I I love being respectful of time. That's something that I have to do. Jesus, that is personal, consistent, not a Wednesday, Sunday thing. Intimacy with God is a place where we will live in constant fellowship with him throughout our day. And we can honestly say this. Go to that next slide. We can say our love for God far outweighs our desire for the things in the world. A kingdom man on kingdom business. I like nice things. I don't think it's bad to like like nice things. But my love for God has to far outweigh what those things are. Those materialistic things. I love the saying that you never seen nobody die with a hearse behind them or a U-Haul. Or have you? Has anybody seen that? Be kind of weird, huh? Some may ask, why should I make time for my secret place? I pray the words of Jesus Christ encourage you. Many want to go deeper but can't find the time or place. The saying of Jesus, our Father is in the secret place. That's why you should go there. Because Jesus said that our Father's there. That's why you should go there. Grab that kingdom man on kingdom business. Our Father's there. That's why we should go. And Jesus continues with when our Father who is in the secret place sees you, he will bless you openly. Many want to be restored, our families back, kids back, strength, healing from a sickness, from the lust, and much, much more. And God desires a relationship and intimacy with you, church. And so much... I asked with this last question, how is your prayer life? Because a lot of the direction of where your heart is at and where your mind is at, I believe is being derived from where your prayer life is at. If you're moving in anger and and lies and, and all this trickery of the mind, it's because maybe we're not praying, trusting, believing, and then acting. And then I'm gonna end on this note. Abraham. This builds kingdom men for kingdom business. Abraham's example of a relationship with God. Here's something that he did. He didn't say he believed his God only. He knew his God. I told the church the other day something. I said, you need to stop believing. Everybody, stop believing in here. And you need to start knowing. Start knowing. He he knew his God. He feared God. He believed God's word. He obeyed God without argument. He surrendered his own will to God. Kingdom men standing on kingdom business need to be praying. My encouragement to you guys today is pray. How is your prayer life? Do you spend time outside of Sunday and Wednesday praying? Not with people, with just you and Abba Father. Let me pray this. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you for this message that you have put in my spirit, Lord. And I pray that it goes forth with that dunamis power. Father God, I pray today that you would bless your people. 
I pray you keep them, Lord. May your countenance be lifted up. May you be gracious to them, Lord. May your face shine upon them. And I pray today, Father God, that you would fill them with that confidence to pray, to seek, to knock, and to ask. And that they would go with that power, Father God, to proclaim the goodness of Jesus. And that they would be so prayed up, Father God, that, that the anointing would just move and people would gravitate to them because they've been in their secret place. And may your face shine upon them, and may you be gracious to them and give them peace, shalom, peace. Let's give God some glory, church.